Thank you, Ellen, and thank you to the Fortune uh, Most Powerful Women team for having me back. It's wonderful to be here. Um, <laughs> and welcome, Mayor Bowser. Um, you and I had the chance to chat in 2015 during your first term. We did. Mayor Bowser is now officially, after having won re-election last fall, the first female two-term mayor of the district in history. And, <laughs> and the first mayor to be re-elected in almost 20 years. So congratulations for those accomplishments. And congratulations on the Nationals being in the World Series. Hey. <laughs> Also a first, I think. Uh, so you've been busy the past couple days. Uh, we've been very busy uh, over the last several months, uh, and many Washingtonians are sleep deprived because yes. we're staying up till midnight and 1 a.m. Uh, Washington, watching the Nationals win, but it's well worth it. And do you have to go everywhere and represent? And well, of? absolutely. So you know, our our, our our first two games are away. Um, we're playing a fantastic team. We were up against one of the best pitchers in the world last night, and we won. Are you a baseball uh, fan? Uh, absolutely. I'm a national. <laughs> Span. Let okay. me be clear. That's great. So they won last <laughs> night. Yeah, they won last night. It was a big deal. Um, so let's talk about this push for statehood. Uh -huh. So this is one of your big priorities right now. Absolutely. Uh, the District of Columbia is a district. It is not a state. And you have basically resurrected a long, you know, this is a historical push that has, has been mounted before, but um, you've brought it back to the forefront. Tell us why. Um, why is because I'm an American, I pay taxes, I'm subject to all the responsibilities of citizenship, yet I don't have all of the benefits. Specifically, I don't have the fundamental benefit of having a vote in Congress. Uh, we have a delegate, she cannot vote. Imagine that on all of the important issues that come before the Congress, she cannot vote. We don't have two senators. We don't have senators at all. Uh, the important things that only the Senate can weigh in on, like confirming a Supreme Court justice or sending Americans to war, we have absolutely no voice. Um, and we think that is counter to everything our country was founded on. And the only way to achieve uh, representation in the Senate is uh, by admission as a state. Now, the founders did want our federal government to not be in a certain state. They wanted it to be in a, you know, a neutral zone. So would, would this plan preserve that? It would preserve it, but I think we all have to recognize that some things have changed uh, since the founding of our nation. Um, and then uh, it was states had something to be concerned about with a federal government. Um, in the states being overwhelmed by a federal government. Uh, now we know the federal government is completely overwhelming, uh, and so that's not the big issue. But what our plan does is it preserves a federal enclave. There will still be a nation's capital, still be a federal district, but it will be smaller. It will include all of our federal buildings. Americans coming to visit their nation's capital won't notice any difference. Still the free museums, great transportation, visits to the White House and Capitol, and all of those things. So this movement has, you know, um, uh, has been given new life. I mean, you were given a hearing, given a vote. Yep. Um, it, where does it stand now? Um, we took to our residents um, the question on statehood in 2016. Uh, one of the good things that came out of that election in my view, and 86% of DC residents voted for statehood. Uh, we had a hearing a couple of months ago, about a month ago, uh, in the Government Oversight Committee. Uh, we expect that committee to mark up the bill. Uh, we have more than 220 sponsors in the House, which means it can pass the House, um, and we think we'll get a vote in the House. But then there's the Senate. I mean, Mitch McConnell has called this full-bore socialism, so. Well, we know the Senate's not doing much of anything um, in moving bills that are important, but that shouldn't stop us. That shouldn't stop us on comprehensive gun reform. That shouldn't stop us on comprehensive immigration reform, and it definitely shouldn't stop us on advancing statehood for Washington, D.C. Great. Another um, issue that has been close to your heart is a new maternal in, uh, health summit that you mm -hmm. have brought to mm -hmm. the fore. Tell us about that a little uh, bit. Well, we are, like many jurisdictions around the nation, concerned about women dying in childbirth. Um, and we think in uh, our nation um, that shouldn't be a huge fear. Uh, we know, especially among African-American women, uh, across all socioeconomic um, levels, the problem of maternal and infant death um, is significant. Uh, so we 
we uh, know in cities, uh, we can do things that the federal government may not be doing, uh, or we can be the impetus for the federal government doing more. So I started two years ago a national infant and mortality uh, summit right here in the district where we're bringing doctors. We Last year we brought elected officials. This year we focused on practitioners both nationally and locally uh, to talk about the problem of maternal and infant death. That's great. And speaking of maternal issues, you yourself became a mom last year. I did. You adopted a baby daughter, a baby girl, yes. Miranda Elizabeth. Yes. And um, and you did that on your own. I you, did. You are a single woman, and um, I am a single mother too. I just had a baby. Congratulations. In April, she's right there. <laughs> I think we have. Um, and she's a star. She loves it. She's Marin so Grace, calm. I think we have pictures of both of these babies that we might be able to show okay. up on the screen. But um, you're, we're part of a small club called Single Mothers by Choice. This means that we decided to go down the path of, of motherhood alone. And so um, what led you to make that decision? And were you daunted by the challenge of being a single mother? Um, I, I was daunted by a lot of it. One thing that motherhood has taught me is that I'm scared and anxious about just about everything when it comes to my daughter. Um, but I also knew that I just always expected that I would be a mom and have a family family and life goes in a lot of different ways uh, and I was clear that there are many ways to make a family and for me uh, I have uh, the the incredible fortune of adopting just the most beautiful loving little girl um, and I will say I was making that decision for myself and my family personally and what I've been struck by is how many people have been touched by that story or how many people have shared with me their own adoption stories, how many women uh, who were like me who decided on a particular political course and then woke up one day and said, hey, hmm, what about being a mom? Mm -hmm. um, and others who won't make that choice and don't want to be a mom. Um, and so those are a lot of different things that, that I've encountered over the last year and a half. Now, one of the things we learn as mothers is that you're not in control anymore. Right. Um, but you really, you, you had had this in mind and um, you, know, you were hoping to um, you know, have, be able to adopt. But Miranda became available when you were least expecting it. You were in the middle of your re-election campaign. I was. So not ideal timing. So tell us how that all went down. Um, well, I was um, thinking about it and kind of thinking about how things would, would roll out in my life. I didn't know. I didn't know that many people who had gone through an adoption process. I had very close friends who had. Uh, and everybody told me it could be a year or two years or even longer um, for the, the process to unfold. So I said, well, I better get started. Um, and I did get started, and I, I did have a great opportunity um, to adopt. And Miranda was born one month before my primary. Wow. wow. And so um, when you're in, you, you can't like, when you're a mayor of a city, it's hard to be out of town ever. Um, and so, or hard to be off the, to be doing anything, not for yourself. Yes. <laughs> right. um, so I was um, probably down for two weeks um, right before my election. Where did you have to go? I, you know, I wanted to be with my daughter, yeah. and so I did not want any time like apart. Mm -hmm. Did you have to travel to get her though? You had to leave the district. I was yeah. out of the district right. for a little while. Right. Mm -hmm. And then how many weeks? Off? You just took a few weeks off. Really, I took uh, two weeks off, um, less than that in some ways, because I had some issues in the city that needed my attention, um, and I had to address them. And it was very different for council members, for citizens, uh, not to, to be, see me on the scene if something was happening. Um, but and then people I, didn't know. No, they didn't know what you were doing. I mean, they didn't. No, know they did. Oh, they they did. knew okay. soon after Miranda was okay. born. Um, I let, let folks know okay. that I've been blessed with uh, opportunity to, to adopt her uh, and that I would be down uh, just 
bonding with my daughter. And so for the most part, I think people were very supportive, but at the same time, they want their mayor when they want their mayor. Uh, and I, I was able to manage that. Now the difference is I am able to manage it. I, I am my boss. Um, I do make my schedule. Um, and so having that time with my daughter was uh, very important, but it also uh, opened my eyes even wider to all of the decisions moms and dads make all the time about um, that time immediately after birth or adoption, but every day uh, after that, um, childcare decisions and how you manage your schedule and um, how you, you know, manage your life. I think it's a challenge for anyone in this room who has uh, children, um, just managing a, a huge career mm -hmm. and and children. I, yeah. I don't know how, you know, <laughs> it, it, it's you know, it's been okay so far, but um, it's definitely it's definitely an issue. So, what are some specific things? How do you um, you have help? Obviously, uh -huh. and your parents are nearby. What's your sort of you know scheduling hack that you find really helpful, or how do, how do you get through the day? My scheduling hack, I like that, is to try to be as consistent as I can to have um, reliable childcare that you can trust. And um, never, when, when I make a commitment to my daughter, even though she's 17 months, I try to keep it. Mm -hmm. That's great. Um, we're gonna go to questions um, in a minute, but um, let's talk about some other issues. We are just a few blocks away from the White House. Mm -hmm. um, there's a big election coming up. What are your thoughts on, on the 2020 election? Um, I will be so uh, happy when people start voting. Um, it is, it's for me, and we are kind of in the, I've said for many years, we're kind of in the belly of the beast where there's just so much chaos. Um, and the, the, the tension and anxiety, I think, in uh, the city and in a lot of different discussions is really high. Uh, and it's distracting from real issues that um, our Congress and President need to be focused on, all of our agency directors. Uh, when I think, you know, I have a city to run. There are 700,000 of us. We have a $15.5 billion budget. Uh, and we deliver services. So we can't um, be sidelined by gridlock, but there are some things that uh, the agencies, federal agencies are helpful to us on, or we need to partner with them on um, basic things in our city, like the national parks, or how we're gonna dispose of RFK Stadium, um, how we're gonna work with all of the human services programs that are going through some changes. So we need federal agencies that work, um, and people who have an agenda um, to, to get done. So that's what I'm really looking forward to getting back to. What would you like to see happen in the, in the election, the federal election? What I like to yeah. see? I would like to see a Democrat in the White House. Mm -hmm. Do you have any favorites? Uh, that supports statehood uh, for Washington, mm -hmm. D.C. Do you have any favorites so far? I mean, I think that we have, we're really um, blessed with a lot of talent in the Democratic primary. And I think that uh, at this stage, I, I, you know, I told a group of my constituents last night that I, I don't know where I'm gonna be. Um, I, I love uh, what Kamala Harris uh, has done. Um, she's been a great supporter of DC and, and me and women in office. Uh, and it's hard for women. Uh, and I think we saw in the last election, you can be the most prepared and still face um, some very significant challenges, in my view, some unfair challenges. Um, I, I really like the campaign that Elizabeth Warren is running. Um, I like that a mayor is in the top tier of candidates in, in Mayor Pete. Um, Cory Booker, uh, born in Washington, D.C., also a, a mayor, uh, has been, I think, a tremendous. I think what's most important to me is that we have a candidate that inspires people to go out and vote. Um, and that focuses on our urban agenda, which affects uh, my town um, and, and can win. Mm -hmm. Who has a question for Mayor Bowser? Anyone over here? Uh, thanks very much for being with us this morning, Katie Koch. I wanted to talk about what you've done with the public schools here in D.C. Mm -hmm. If you could comment on how you've um, gotten enrollment to go up, other progress, and how we could scale that nationally. No, thank you for that question. So yesterday, I was able to announce that we've seen 11 straight years of growth in our public schools, both these, our traditional public schools and our um, public charter schools, 11 straight years. Our traditional public schools, in fact, saw a four percent increase over um, the, the previous year. So now we have about 94,000 kids in public education. Our 
population is growing and more people are choosing public schools. And I think over 10 years, our taxpayers, DC taxpayers, have said to every elected official, do everything that you can uh, to transform public education and we're gonna be right there behind you. Our teachers are the best paid in the region and we have a competitive um, process to evaluate teachers and retain highly effective teachers. So teachers have been, uh, have made a huge difference. We spent $4 billion in our facilities transforming um, our facility. So when you walk into one of our um, environments, you, you've, you see um, that we value um, our children. Uh, and we put very um, engaging content in front of them. Uh, we have a public charter school sector that is uh, doing what that sector should do, um, keeping innovative schools um, open. Um, and when schools aren't working, they are they're shutting those schools down. So I think we have a mix of things that are working in our city, but we have work to do. Um, one of the things I pledged when I became mayor was I would focus on our middle grades. Um, and over the last two years now, we've seen our population in the middle grades grow up. We're also focused on making sure we have a variety of options for high school, strong neighborhood options, um, but also early college. We just opened Bard Early College in our city, a two-year degree, associate's degree, our children will receive upon graduation. Bard, $75,000 a year, so that's $150,000 value for our family. So that's what we're doing, and we're gonna keep doing it. That's great, thank you for it's the changed, question. Uh, it's transformed our city. That's great, thank you. Um, well, we're just about out of time. I'll just ask you one more thing. What, what can we look for for your political future? What are your aspirations? Um, well, I'm surprised at how frequently people ask me because, you know, I'm only in the first year of a four-year term. <laughs> and everybody, and somebody asked me, are you running again? Are you running again? Are you running again? There are no term limits in Washington, D.C. Um, and I feel as long as we are inspiring um, D.C. residents, uh, that I'm going to look forward to serving DC residents. Do you have aspirations for any um, other office in the future? Any larger, uh, bigger platform? Um, I think this will, being mayor of DC, will probably be my last elective office unless somebody calls me with something else interesting. Or unless Miranda <laughs> has an opinion about that. She may have some thoughts. She may. She may. She may. What's she like? Um, she is a beautiful, loving child. She's very, very vocal. She moves around a lot. She moves around too much effect. Now she has a nice little shiner on her forehead for moving around a lot. Um, and uh, she is very observant. And she, she, I think she gets that um, we are in office, that yeah. she serves. <laughs> I think she gets that. They do. Um, sounds like we have a future most powerful women in the making. So Perfect. congratulations Thank you. to you. Thank, Thank you, you for being Thank here. Thank you. Congratulations Thank to you. you. Thank you.